Today I'm going to do a raw edit using only Topaz Studio 2. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Well, you know what? Topaz Studio 2 is a really good raw processing piece of software. And I just wanted to show you how you could uh, effectively process a raw file using only Topaz Studio 2. Let's get started. I have Topaz Studio 2 opened up. I'm just going to click right here where it says browse. And now just point your browser to where your files are located. Today, I'm going to work on this raw file of this cat here. So I'm going to click this and click open and we'll get started on this raw file. This particular image is pretty noisy. I shot it at ISO 5000. This is more in the evening when I shot this, but as you can see, there's a ton of noise in this image. Can you see all that noise? I won't be using Topaz Denoise AI, but I'll be using its predecessor, which is AI Clear, which is really where the AI all started at. So if you have Topaz Studio 2, you have a great noise reduction and sharpening piece of software, and it's built right into Topaz Studio 2. Now I'm working on this raw file at the raw level, and I'm gonna run denoising on it first. So let's come up to Add Filter, and you'll notice it's the first in the list of essentials, AI Clear. So click that, and it'll automatically go and run its noise reduction in the auto mode. Now give it a second or two here, and you'll see the result. I mean, check the result. Here's the before. And here's the after. So pretty amazing. It's sharpening and it's also noise reducing all at the same time. Now I find the auto setting is generally really good and that's pretty much what I use, but you could try these other settings as well. And also enhanced sharpness, you have low or high. I'm gonna leave this on low and I think I'm getting uh, some good sharpening here. So I'm, I, I like the image and it looks good. So there's no need to set this to high. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom back out and now you'll also notice you do have an exposure adjustment in here and a clarity adjustment. So Topaz give you different sliders like this and different uh, filters just in case you need them, okay? So sometimes you just need a little extra exposure or whatever, but you have that here if you need it. But what I like to do next is after I do AI clear is go to add filter and go and grab a basic adjustment. We have an auto white balance adjustment here. Let's go ahead and turn this on and see what it looks like. I like that. I think it looks pretty good. Here's before and here's after. I think I'm going to go with that. I'm going to leave that on. I'm going to turn on my histogram here just to see where my white and black level was set at. Now, my white level looks pretty good. You can set a white level here by adjusting the slider to the right or to the left. So I might just give it a slight bit here. And then I'm going to pull my black level to the left a little bit on the histogram. And yeah, I think right there. Now that's give me a good white and black point setting. I think I'll pull my highlights back a little bit. I always like pulling my highlights back on no matter what piece of software I'm working on. So I'm gonna pull the highlights back a little bit. As far as shadows, I think the shadows look pretty good, but I think I'll try opening them up a little bit. I'm gonna move the shadow slider to the right here. Yeah, just a little wee bit, something like that. Let me give it a little bit more exposure here, not too much, maybe somewhere right around there. Now let me left click on the uh, canvas or on the image with my mouse. And there's the before and there's the after. Now, one thing I wanna point out about uh, Topaz Studio 2, this is a non-destructive workflow. When we're all said and done, we can come up here and go to file and save project as. We can save this as a project and that will save this with all the layers intact. Or else you can export it and export it as a TIFF or whatever you want. So it is a totally non-destructive workflow, just in case you're wondering. I think I'm happy with the saturation and I do like the auto white balance, so I'm good there. The next thing I want to do is add a pop of contrast in here. And I'm just going to use a curves adjustment to do that. So I'm just going to set a point right here. Click once. Set another point here once. I'm going to pull this shadow area down just a little wee bit and pull up the highlights just a touch. And that's going to give me a little bit of an S-curve. Now, I may have went too strong on the shadows. So let me just pull this back up a little bit here. So here is the before. Now, you can shut off the layer by clicking the eye right here. Here's the before the curves adjustment. And here's after the curves adjustment. So I like that. I think what I'll do after doing that is come back to the basic adjustment. And I'm going to pull my highlights back just a little bit more, just so they're not too hot. Okay, let's look at the histogram one more time. Yeah, everything's looking okay. The next thing I think I want to do is add a little bit of detail to the cat. I think the fur would be really nice. Let's zoom into our cat right here. 
so we can see. Let's come up here to Add Filter, and let's go to one of my favorite filters inside of Topaz Studio 2, Precision Detail. Now, I'm only looking at the cat because I'm going to mask it onto the cat only. So let me pull up the small detail first. Now, this just deals with the overall small detail. You can work with overall shadows and highlights, and I mainly work with overall. Sometimes I work with shadows and highlights, but generally overall is going to get the job done for me. So I'm going to give it a little bit of small detail. I'll pull that up so you can really, can you see that detail starting to pop out? Now that's way too much. So I'm going to pull this back. I just want a little bit of small detail in there. And then I'm going to go with a little bit of medium detail. It's going to look for a little larger areas of detail. And I don't want to go too crazy here, but just a little bit. A little bit of this goes a long way. And this is large. And I don't think the large is helping because as you'll notice there, the eyes were getting way too dark. So I'm just going to pull this large detail back. Here's the image before precision detail. Just look at the cat and here's the after. Just that little bit of extra detail there. And let me take the medium. I just want to bring the medium up a little bit more. Yeah, just a little bit more in that medium detail. Okay, so now what I want to do is come up to this layer mask, click on it. And what we want to do is invert this layer mask. See these three dots here? Click on this and click invert. And then grab a brush. And right now it's hiding the adjustment, right? And now you can adjust your brush radius size right here. I'm going to leave edge aware turned on. There's really good masking in Topaz Studio too. The softness is at 50, which is a good setting here. And I want to make sure my transparency is turned to white. Because what I want to do is paint this adjustment on this cat. And just bring detail out on the cat. Now I don't have to paint everywhere. Just the areas that I want detail to pop out. Okay, and that, uh, like I said, that um, edge aware is going to really be nice along the edges to give me a good edge here because it gets the cat gets a little softer as we go over this way. This leg's pretty has a lot of uh, sharpness in it, so I might just go like that because this looks nice soft here. I'm not going to hit the detail everywhere, just on this area right in here. But isn't that nice? Let's take a look. Here is the before, and here's the after. Let me go ahead and zoom back out. And now let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. But see how that really pops the fur on that cat. Next, I think I want to lighten up the cat. So I'm going to grab a basic adjustment. Now, the nice thing is you can stack these adjustments up. You notice I already have a basic adjustment. I could put as many of these out as I want. Okay, so here's another basic adjustment. Come to the layer mask here and invert it and... That's going to hide my adjustment. Now, I have not made an adjustment yet, but I'm going to grab a brush tool, and this time I'm going to take the transparency, again, like I did on that last mask, and drag it the whole way to the right. I could have copied that mask, but I didn't paint on the entire cat. This time, what I want to do is paint on the entire cat. I'm going to get a little smaller brush here and just paint on this cat here, but that edge of wear is really nice. I'm going to be a little sloppy and fast here, but take your time and get this right, okay? I'm sure I'm going to overshoot a little area here, but just for the sake of time, I'm trying to hurry up. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller and paint on the tail back here. Okay, and I think I'm pretty good, pretty good to go there. All right, so now here's what I want to do. I'm going to click on the basic adjustment. And now if I take the exposure, it's only going to be affecting the cat, right? So let me start to pull this up a little bit. See how it's only lightening up the cat? And I could take the highlights, and I think I'll pull the highlights back a little bit because I don't want them getting too hot. That's too much. Maybe right about there. Let's take a look. Here is the before, and here is the after. Before and after. But it just lightens up our cat just a little wee bit. And then if we wanted to with the basic adjustment, I might give it just the tiny, the tiniest bit of saturation. And I mean just a tiny, like about... Uh, that's, that's too much. I'm going to say right around there, like a four. So here is the before and now here is the after. So lighten the cat up and gave him a little bit more saturation. The next thing I want to do is lighten up the cat's eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. I'm going to grab another, uh, basic adjustment. And again, I'm going to click on the layer mask and invert the layer mask. 
so it hides my adjustment. Now, I do not have an adjustment yet, but what I'm going to do is grab a brush and let's get my radius because I'm going to paint on the eye. So I'm going to get a brush about that size right there. My softness is at 50, edge wear is turned on, and I'm going to take my transparency slider and drag it the whole way to the right so that I'm painting white paint on here. And all I want to do now is paint that. Now, I might have to make my brush a little bit smaller. And paint this in here just like so and I'm going kind of fast here so take your time and get it right but I think that's gonna work and so now let's come back up here and click on basic adjustment and now I'm going to take the exposure and just pull up on the exposure here and see how I'm just lightening up the eyes a little bit and I could give it a little bit more saturation here too if I think I want it Not too much, but just a little wee bit. So here is the before, and here's the after. Let me zoom back out so you can really see it, because I think the eyes are going to look really cool. Here's the before, and here's the after. Now remember, it's non-destructive. You can always go back and readjust things if you need to. If you felt you got those eyes too hot, you can go back and fix them. I think the last thing I want to do is add a slight vignette around the edges of the image. So let's come up here to Add Filter and click on vignette and add a vignette here. Now the strength defaults at 50 and it's the color set for black for a dark edge. You can also change this to different colors if you want to, which is really cool. I'll save that for another tutorial, but let me take the strength and take it the whole way off. Okay, there's no vignette applied now. Now you can adjust the size and the transition around us, all that typical vignette stuff, which everybody knows how to do. But let me just take the strength at this point and just darken up the edges a little wee bit something like that here is the before and here's the after and i think that's really nice now there's one last thing i'm going to see if i can fix this see on his eye right here or under his eye he has a little problem here let me see if i can fix that with a healing tool so i'm going to click on the healing tool right here and we can adjust the size of this healing brush i'll make it smaller and what i want to do is come right here and just let me just paint over this area right here let me see if it can heal that. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Let me make the brush a little bit smaller and just paint right here. See if I can heal that little section up right there. Yeah, and that looks better. And then after you're done with the healing, all you have to do is click apply. So now let me go ahead and zoom back out. So our image started out looking like this. And now it looks like this. So that was a complete raw edit using Topaz Studio 2. When you're finished with your edit, you can save it as a project or you could export it as, say, like a TIFF or a JPEG, PNG, whatever. If you want to export it, just come here to export and, you know, tell it what you want. JPEG, TIFF, PNG, whatever. Give it a name, show it where you want it to go to, all right? Or you could save it as a project if you come up here to File and click on Save Project or Save Project As. You can give it a name, tell it where you want it to go to, and then when you open that project up again, it'll have all these layers intact, and you'll still be working on your image in the raw format, which is nice. Well, there it is, everyone. That was a complete raw edit using Topaz Studio 2. Now, don't forget you have AI Clear in there, which is a great noise reducing and sharpening piece of software right inside of Topaz Studio 2, so don't forget that. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.